We've been cooling our heels for three weeks, maybe a little more, and we finally get to go to work. Finally. <laughs> Never thought I'd be happy to be out this early in the morning. And in 34 degrees. In 34 degree weather. It's not bad. I mean, it's a, it's a brisk 34. Oh, but it feels like... I hate that, so don't get started. <laughs> it is or it isn't. Uh, but it's supposed to warm up to about 66 today and it's supposed to be in the low 70s tomorrow and then the day after that we're supposed to get four to eight inches of snow. They say four to eight, Ooh. but I don't know. So uh, It ain't going to stick, so I don't know how they're going to get four to eight inches. But we're just happy to be working finally. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> we're a little stir crazy after being locked up for a while. I gained all my weight back. My girlish figure went... Well, you're in shape. Yeah, I guess round is a shape, ain't it? <laughs> oh, so we're happy to get going here and uh, we're going to try and get, can't promise anything. We're going to try to get the first beats falling on the ground and, and show you all what this is all about from start to finish, but we're ready to get this party started. Yoink. Time to go to work. Let's go get her out of bed. <laughs> Time to go to work. Last time we talked to you about the sugar beet harvest was just us getting settled in and talked about uh, a little bit about what the job was like. 
Today we're going to take some time and talk to you about what it takes to actually survive working the sugar beet harvest, which uh, should be interesting. <laughs> He's got nothing to say. <laughs> and I guess probably the hardest part for most people is you're on your feet 12, 13 hours a day. Um, that's a long work day if you've never worked that long. You're out in the elements. Um, breaks are sporadic. Um, if you're working on the ground, you generally can be guaranteed you're going to get regular breaks. If you're up on the piler like us, not so much. <laughs> Unless they have uh, people come by and who, who, who have been trained in, in running the uh, piler, they'll come by and give you a break. <clears throat> and it depends on what piling site you're at. I and mean, we're talking about ours specifically, which is a smaller one. And um, so, uh, and we don't really care if we take breaks or not, as long as somebody lets us go pee every once in a while. That's really all, that, you know, we can eat and stay up there. It doesn't bother us, but, um, but yeah, being on your feet for 12, 13 hours a day um, is probably the one thing that people struggle with the most. The job itself is kind of boring, truthfully. Um, there's a lot going on if you're running the piler, but if you're on the ground, you have a lot of downtime. Um, it's not complicated. It's, re it's repetitious. Repetitious? Repetitious? Look that one up in the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, the trucks come in, you take their ticket, you take a sample, you wave them back to get their farm dirt. And that's it. And, you know, if you're on the piler, it's it's definitely a lot busier. You have a lot more going on. You're watching the boom. You're watching the trucks. You're working the levers and the buttons. And if you're the boom boss, right, Barb? Stressful. It's a very, very, very stressful job. It's like the job itself. It's stupid money. <laughs> so the, the boom boss is um, the person who watches the boom and gives the operators hand signals and lets them know when those beats are getting close to the pile because the last thing you want is for for that belt bind up in the beats and have the chain jump or the belt break and then you're out of commission for until they get it fixed and that's bad and um, it's a very stressful job you got to be able to determine how many trucks can be fit in a swing guess you'd call it uh, you got to know what the pile can handle yeah. how many trucks you can get in there before it gets full and you get your titty in a ringer <laughs> and if you uh, especially if you ask Barb I think she'll tell you the boom boss is the biggest suck ass job <laughs> <laughs> at the beet harvest um, really it of anybody I think has the most responsibility and you're standing there like this, looking up at the, the pile all day and, and the boom. And you just, that's all you're doing is watching that boom all day. And uh, just trying to judge two or three trucks ahead. Yeah. It's, it is. It's a stressful job. Very much so. Thank you, Barb, if you're listening. And uh, then if you're a helper on the ground, the, that's not too bad. You just, you take the, you take the tickets, you get the sample, you wave the trucks back. Um, to get their farm dirt. The biggest challenge with that is just always knowing where those trucks are so that you're not in their way. And some of those drivers are a little scary. You never want to be directly behind one when they're backing up because who knows what they're going to do. Had a couple of them back right into the piler this year. Um, and then the piler operator. And that one you're up on a raised platform, at least at our location, that uses the older equipment. You're on a raised platform out in the elements all day. So then that brings us to our second point. Not only are you on your feet 12 or 13 hours a day, but you're out in the weather. And beets can only be harvested at a certain very narrow temperature range. And that means you're going to be anywhere from mildly to moderately uncomfortable most of the time you're out there because it's cold and it's windy and you bundle up. So is this a fashion statement or what? 
So the best time to do the beets is 40 degree weather. In between 40 and 50 degrees, it's 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 nice. Mm -hmm. Now where where we've been doing it in Montana, you're out there usually in like mid 30s to mid 40s weather, but it's eastern Montana, so you generally have like 20, 30 mile an hour wind too. Um, some days are nice. We've had some nice days where it's been 70 degrees and sunny, and then we've had other days we've been out there where they were at a push and had to get it done, and we're out there in 21 degrees all day with the wind howling, and just was just miserable that day. Yeah. But again, you prepare for it, you bundle up, and you just kind of mentally get yourself prepared for it. So, and then if all that hasn't scared you off so far, um, patience is another one because you work and then all of a sudden you're off because the beats freeze and they have to wait and then you work again and then you're off again and uh, you call in every morning uh, usually 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning they have a message on the machine that tells you whether or not they're working you call you check in if they give you the thumbs up you go sometimes they'll say call back at 8 you call back at 8, they'll say call back at 10. You call back at 10, they'll say call back at noon. You call back at noon, they tell you, nope, we're not working today. And then you're thinking, I could have stayed in bed. Or <laughs> they tell you at 6 o'clock to call back at 9. Sometimes you get impatient and you call back at 8 and they want you there a half hour ago. <laughs> so they're, they're an iffy thing, you know. Yeah. It's a constant check that phone, check the phone. Yeah. Um, so those are really the big things is... You're going to be on your feet all day, you're going to be out in the elements and be cold, and you have to be patient where the scheduling is concerned, um, and the on again, off again. Now, the consolation on the days that you don't work, you're still getting paid four hours each to sit home. That's Montana. That's Montana. What they do in North Dakota and all them other places, I have no idea. Um, and on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, if you're working, it's time and a half all day. If you're down because of weather, your stay pay to stay home is also time and a half. So it's not that's not a bad deal. Um, and then you're just going to be exhausted. Mm -hmm. You're just... You, Patience will be tested. Everybody gets grumpy and cranky after a while. After a while? The number one sign is flashed all the time. He was told he was number one a lot this last harvest. And I just take that as a compliment. Sweet! Thank you! I'm number one. Um, but yeah, everybody, you're, you, you're tired, and then on top of it, you're freezing cold, and you're miserable, and you're just grumpy, and the whole world just sucks at that point. Mm -hmm. But it's short-lived. It, it only lasts a couple of work weeks and then you're done. Um, and uh, so a few things we found that help make it survivable. One, prep your meals ahead of time. Um, last thing you want to do when you've left the house at 6 a.m. and you've worked all day and you get home and it's 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Last thing you want to do is cook. So what we usually do is we will go and buy a whole bunch of food and I'll spend two or three days solid just making meals, putting them in Ziploc bags and sticking them in the freezer. And I usually have about two weeks worth of dinners prepped before harvest begins. And that way in the morning, you take whatever you wanna eat that night, you take it out of the fridge and toss it in the sink and it thaws out during the day and then you come home that night, you dump it on a plate, nuke it, and in two minutes you've got a hot homemade meal. And then you go crash and go to bed. <laughs> and Groundhog Day. You Take have to. Over. And again. And again. Last year, we worked 16 days. We were there for one month from the day we checked in to the day we pulled out. We were there one month. We worked 16 days and we made $10,000. Not bad, not a bad little chunk of change. This year, 
we were there for a month and a half, we probably still only worked 14 days because we were home for weather a lot and we still made in excess of eight thousand yeah. dollars so you have to it's what you make of it you have to embrace the suck the suck you do yeah are we gonna do it again it's up in the air i wouldn't mind it we'll see <laughs> we're retired now so she says we don't have to We'll see what happens. We might. We might, though. We're trying to cover, like, all the scary stuff, you know, the... Um, and then we don't want to scare you away because mm -hmm. it's it's easy, boring, repetitious... Repetitious? Repetitious, yeah. Job. It... it I, I, there's nothing else to say other than you're going to be cold, you're going to be tired... At some you're going to be gonna pissed be off cranky. at somebody. <laughs> um, I don't know what else. And yet, you work with great people when you have those down days. You go and you hang out and you do some stuff. Maybe go check out the brewery. Um, or like the RV park had the potluck for us. Um, you get invitations to go to church and Sunday brunch with people sometimes. Um, Last year we had an awesome crew. This year we had an awesome crew. And it seems like on the other pilers, everybody was crazy. And I know why our crew was awesome. It was me. I <laughs> kept everybody's spirits up. They were always telling me I was number one, so I just kept going at it. Way to go, guys. Yes. I just kept giving, getting the number one signal. And I'm like, I can't do any better. <laughs> So uh, there you have it. The you know, we don't want to don't want to scare you off, but we don't want to sugarcoat it either. Yeah. You know, um, if it's something that you're thinking you might want to try, if nothing else, give it a shot. The worst that happens is you hate it and you never go back. <laughs> yeah, it's not a career. <laughs> but we know people who have done it six, seven, eight, nine years in a row, and they go back year after year, and uh, we might. We're still. We're still considering it. Um, if we do, it'll be our third year. Yeah, but she wants to go see the balloons. I do. I in New Mexico. I do. I want to go to the balloon fiesta, and it's right at the same time as Sugar Beet Harvest. So, we'll see. We'll see. So, anyways, if you have questions about it, ask us. Leave them in the comments or send us an email. Our email is in the video description and we'll answer any questions we can about it. Uh, they'll start taking applications for this next year. Um, we'll probably open them up January or February. They, they try and start pretty early even though a lot of times they don't know what's going on with the harvest until sometimes August um, depending on weather and that type of thing um but they do try and get people lined up fairly early so so they'll be taking applications pretty soon and if it's something you're considering and you want to know more let us know and we'll see what we can do to answer your questions if this video was helpful please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment and that really helps us out and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already thanks for dropping in and watching our video and listening to us gab <laughs> and next time we'll begin our venture south and we pick up a passenger who rides with us for about a month and his name is mayhem mayhem if i ever see you again so help me you're not welcome no <laughs> more no more all right we'll see y'all next time bye bye